One of the rarest Sega Mega Drive peripherals ever made is in my collection. We're going to be taking a look at it and unboxing it. My name's Mike and this is the Retro Gamer Boy Show. In today's show, we're going to be taking a look at one of the rarest peripherals ever made for the Sega Mega Drive. It's the Sega Action Chair. I've always wanted one ever since I saw it as a teenager in my local Woolworths store in the UK. And earlier this year, I finally got my hands on one. I'm also going to be making a custom authentic box for it. So stick around for that. And if you like this video, I'd appreciate it if you could share it with others. Before we take a look at the chair and unbox it, let's learn a little bit more about the Sega Action Chair. The Sega Action Chair was invented in 1990 by Cecil Boyd, who holds the patent for controller seat for video games. He worked for a small Missouri company called Simulator Technology Inc, run by Terry Tesma, who is also named in a later invention patent for the video display controller apparatus, alongside Cecil Boyd and Kenneth Dwyer, who sadly passed away in January of this year. Both these patents were for the Simulator 1 and Simulator 2 action chairs, a full-sized arcade chair that plugged into your console and allowed you to control characters and vehicles by leaning in the direction you wanted to move. The action chair was released in 1991 in North America as the Simulator 1 and Europe as the Simulator 2. The European release got an official distribution deal from Sega and the chair was rebranded as the official Sega Action Chair. In North America, the company couldn't strike a deal with Sega and so found local distributors to sell the chair through. As the chair was not an official Sega product here, it was aimed at both the Sega Genesis and the Nintendo Entertainment System, with two leads packed in the box, which you switch between depending on which console you had. The European release had a custom Sega PCB and an unbranded lead. The chair didn't sell well and only a very limited quantity were manufactured with the company voluntarily dissolving in 1992. It was the largest and heaviest Sega peripheral and stores were reluctant to buy them. They took up too much space in storage and on the store floor and they were heavy with new owners needing a car to put the box in to take them home. Now finding a boxed Sega action chair is very improbable, maybe even impossible. There are no publicly available images of the official Sega version of the chair boxed but I have a foggy recollection of the chair being in a white box with a large Sega branded sticker on the front. From what I recall, the branding used the white European Master System and Japanese Sega branding. Regardless, the box was most likely thrown away by most people due to its size or they perished over time. After some hunting, I did manage to find these pictures of the North American Simulator 1 box. They seem to line up with my old memory of the European version. Now, I love my complete in box Sega Mega Drive collection, and I really wanted to have the Sega Action Chair boxed as well. But getting a complete in box Sega Action Chair is impossible. So I've decided to create a new style box. A box that, when you look at it, would feel as authentic as if Sega had created it themselves. But before we do that, let's take a look at the Sega Action Chair. So, how did I get my hands on a peripheral? that only comes up for sale once every few years. Well, it was luck and chance. I belong to an awesome Sega Mega Drive community on Facebook called the Sega Mega Drive Extreme Collectors. Here, fans of the console share information and history, pictures of stunning collections and very rare and exclusive pieces from the Mega Drive collection, and they sell and trade games, consoles, and peripherals. Now, Daniel, a member of the group, posted up the Sega Action Chair for sale. I just so happened to log in just after he posted the listing and had a huge adrenaline rush. I was also torn. I just the week before purchased the Sega Mega CD karaoke machine from a German seller for over £1,000. Daniel was looking for £400 for the chair and local pickup. I wrestled in my head for all of five seconds before throwing my hat into the ring. I couldn't let something that I had wanted since I was 13 slip through my hands. And after a little back and forth on how we would get it to me, I paid Daniel and waited for the chair to turn up. Before I knew it, the chair had arrived in a massive box. And you can see why shops didn't want this taking up space in the store. Not only was it expensive at £100 back in the day, but it's huge and Daniel packed this as compactly as he could. 
The chair itself is in good condition, but as you look closely, you can see the wear and tear of a well-loved peripheral. It's also showing signs of age with some light bubbling of the paintwork as the steel starts to oxidize. One of the projects I'll be taking on this year is restoring the chair and treating that rust before it becomes a problem. I would have done it in this video, but I couldn't find the right color. So later this year, I'll strip the paint, get rid of the imperfections and rust and restore the chair to new. I took the chair apart as I was assessing what I needed to do to restore it and came across some interesting things that I don't think anyone who doesn't have the chair would know about it. Firstly, the chair has a number on its base and I'm not sure if this is a reference number or an inventory number. The second is that the Sega name appears nowhere on the chair except for on the PCB where we have Sega clearly on both sides and then Gen, which I'm guessing stands for Genesis. This makes sense as the company was based in the United States. And lastly, I wanted to share with you how the input mechanism works. There are four micro switches mounted on the PCB. There's also a thick stem that moves as the player leans in the chair. And as it does so, it pushes on these long metal plates that push down on the micro switches. All eight directions can be achieved by pushing against these long metal plates. Now, like I said earlier, I really want to have this complete in box, but I think I can do better than what the original was, rather than that white cardboard box with the sticker on the front. I'm gonna create something as if Sega had created it. I'm gonna be using the original materials, plastic, cards, and paper to create something so convincing that when I look at it, I feel like I've got an official boxed Sega product. Now, when it comes to the construction of the box, I'm gonna be taking design cues from the Mega CD and the karaoke boxes two devices that were released in a similar time frame as the Sega Action Chair. Both devices have a cardboard sleeve, which is this thin card here, which is about 550 GSM and has a nice gloss finish. And then inside there's cardboard that holds the actual and houses the devices. So I'll be using a mixture of single walled. This is when you've got corrugated card and it's just one line of corrugated card and double walled, so double is two of these layers. And I'll probably use the double layer stuff for the main housing of the box, because it is a pretty heavy peripheral. To start with, I bought two double walled boxes. These are the right length and width for the base of the chair. I'm adjusting the height for the first box and using the second box as the packing elements for the chair. Once I have the internals of the box, I move on to designing the sleeve. Whilst the structure of the box is influenced by the Mega CD, the sleeve design follows the look and feel of the Mark I Mega Drive. I wanted the games that I played with on the chair and that worked best with the peripheral on the sides and back of the box art. I then looked at the promotional material for the chair and from Sega themselves during this period and based on the tone of voice, used this for the text. Because the box is so big, Printing firms were reluctant to print and cut it for me, with some quoting up to £700. This was ridiculous, so instead I designed the box in two halves and had two massive prints made. It was still expensive, costing £100 for both prints, including shipping. Given the cost, I needed my measurements to be millimetre perfect. I also got an anti-scratch coating added to the card. Cutting the card was straightforward and I just needed to be patient. Once both parts were cut, I scored the back of the card and made all the necessary folds before sticking the two bits of card together, making sure that the Mega Drive grid pattern aligned perfectly. With the final fold done, I stuck the final edge together to give the box sleeve its form. Then it was time for the big moment. Would the sleeve fit snugly around the packing box? It did and I breathed a sigh of relief. Actually, I think I punched the air and danced around the room, but we won't get into that. The final part was to pack the individual parts of the chair in a way I thought Sega may have done if they had made the box. And then, after two months of cutting, folding, painting, drawing, and researching, it was finally finished.
So now it's finished, it's time for the first unboxing of the Sega Action Chair. And as you can see, the box is huge and I literally have no extra space. There's a little bit of card I've put on there, but this is close to how big the actual original box would have been. Now, as you can see here on the front, I've tried to get it to look as close to the style of the original Mega Drive, the Mark I Mega Drive, as I could. It's got all of the marketing blurb on the side here. Then as we rotate the box around, we also have a number of games, and these are games that I've played on the action chair that I found to be most compatible for the action chair. And I've got all the screenshots here, all high res, with the names of the games, and again, some marketing blurb. Now, as we move to the back, this is where it's, uh, I'm, quite, <laughs> I'm quite proud of this bit. This is very authentic to what you'd find on the back of a Sega Mega Drive box, especially in Europe. You've got different colored boxes here for the different colored languages, a picture of the project and more games on there. And I've got the Master System logo down here as well because the action chair is compatible with the Master System and in all their marketing material that Sega put out, they mention the Master System as being compatible with the chair. Then on this side, we have some product pictures here, and these are close-ups of the actual chair that are in here as well. Uh, so we've got the handle, the seat, and the footrest. And again, I've got those kind of 90s taglines where they try to make more out of the thing than it actually is. Things like full, le <laughs> full leg support. So a little kind of in-joke there. And then on the top here, I've decided to get this custom sticker made. It's a proper vinyl sticker here, and it has included Afterburner 2. And what I was going for here was the kind of menacer thing where the peripheral actually comes with the game as well. Underneath the box, which I won't lift up because it weighs over six kilograms and I don't want it to fall apart in my hands, there's a really long barcode that allows you to scan it. And if you scan it, it brings up the actual action chair as well. Let's unbox it. So let's lift up the giant lid. And as you can see, we have a top layer and in this top layer here, we have uh, gaps or holes here for the hand grips, and these are all bagged as well, with the zip bags. We have our pack-in game here, which is Afterburner 2. And then inside, we've got all this paraphernalia. So if I open this up, we can take a look at that. We've got a quick start guide. And this quick start guide is inspired by a quick start guide that I found on the internet uh, very similar, same sort of um, text and images, all pulled from the original. So there's the quick start guide. We have a bag that has individual bags that has all the nuts and bolts in it. We've got uh, an original piece of uh, Sega paraphernalia here. And then lastly, we have an instruction manual that comes in a number of different languages and it's got more extensive instructions on how to use the action chair, its compatibility, button layout for the Sega Master System and for the Sega Mega Drive. Um, I'm pretty happy with this. So everything you'd get with a normal Sega peripheral there. Then this top layer lifts off. So the first thing we see is we've got the actual chair itself and I've got it in this thick protective plastic and I've put these little square foam squares on the bottom of the screws to keep that protected and it's all nicely sealed up. Then inside here we've got these boxes here. These boxes here actually stop the chair from moving around and also support the main chair on top of that and they've been cut so that they fit around the chair. So we've got one on the left side there, and we've got one on the right side here. Then at the back here, we've got the leg support, uh, and this has got card around it at the top here. Uh, and this just slides off. And then last but not least, we have the base and I've got some plastic bags around the top or the bottom of the arms there. And you can see down there, we've got the cable. It's got the black cable tie on it that you'd get on Sega products. And you also get a little bag around it as well. Again, the same sort of thing you would have got in original Sega products. And that's everything. This huge box 
is what's needed to house the Sega Action Chair. So there's the Sega Action Chair and my custom authentic-ish box for it. I'm so happy to have it in collection. But is it any good with games? No. <laughs> it's terrible to control with. Moving your body around was a terrible idea, but it was so cool back in the day. And I was reminded of this when I unboxed it, played it. It was okay. It felt immersive, but I couldn't get very far in any of the games I played. I had to play games that needed very broad control, didn't need any kind of fine touch. I did try play some platformers, but shooters, first person shooters, uh, arcade shooters, driving games, feels very nice. Playing Monaco GP with it felt excellent. Again, didn't get very far in it, but it felt very immersive. And I was reminded of the magic I felt as a kid when my son came in, sat in it and played it. He loved it. He said it was the most amazing thing he played with. And again, that's what I felt when I was a kid. Now, if you enjoy videos like this, you love the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive, you love collecting retro games, playing retro games, then why not consider subscribing? You can do this by clicking on a little button just below this video. We put out brand new videos every single week and so that you don't miss them, there's also a little bell notification you can press and we'll notify you as soon as we've got a new show. But if you can't wait until next week, don't worry because we've got a huge back catalogue of retro gaming videos for you to enjoy.